Welcome to Fear It Goes, the podcast all about taking your fears with you and doing it anyway. I'm your host, Brandi Taylor. Hello, beautiful souls. I am about to share some serious vulnerability with you today. I don't like these moments. And I'm going to be so unbelievably real with you right now. I hate being this vulnerable. I certainly don't want to admit it publicly. But we all have moments like this. And it's important to know that this is your journey. This is life. It's not, it's not something that just fixes overnight or that we just put a Band-Aid on. It's real. This is how our minds work. This is the struggle we experience as we move up the ladder to awareness, awakening, and truth. And I guess truth is the big word here. So truth. Okay. Over these past few weeks, because it's always like this, I do a lot of mindset work. I've honestly come to a point where I truly embody mindset work. I am always addressing what needs to be looked at. And I'm always willing. And we've talked about this before. I'm willing. And this is why I'm really good at what I do with other people. And this is why if you struggle with sabotage, where you sabotage yourself or you start something and don't finish it or experience that I want that and then you talk yourself out of it, all of these are minds at work. And they're boiled down really simply. It's not really this simple, but for the sake of this podcast, it is. Boiled down this simply, it's us resisting our truth. It's us being stuck in our ego. Ego is all about fear and a state of lack. And the interesting thing is often I've looked at ego and thought to myself, this is so manipulative because the mind can be manipulative and it keeps presenting to you in the outside world in ways that you fucking hate. And I've been hating things over the last little bit. Hating. Certain parts of my life have been absolutely amazing and so aligned. And then other parts, I'm like, what the hell? But this is ego holding on to what needs to be taught. So as much as up until I'm sharing this with you, it's a very vulnerable moment for me up until a few hours ago when I had a complete and utter breakdown cry (laughs) Because that's sometimes what we need to be able to release the emotion we're holding so tightly. Whatever it is, maybe you go punch a bag for two hours or you go for a run until you're exhausted or whatever way you release the emotion because the emotion is a physical experience. For me, it was a cry, but a complete breakdown cry because I was holding on through all my vision was through fear. All my perception was through fear. And of course, when we're in fear, what do we see? We see more fear. We see no options. We see no ability. We doubt ourselves constantly over and over and look at ourselves and go, who am I? What do I have to bring to people? What can I offer that 10 other people can't offer? The other 10 in my position don't offer or the other 100 or the other 50,000 people that do what I do, depending on what you do. But you are unique and you do bring value. It's your ego bringing up questions within yourself that need resolve. And it does it in so many different ways until you listen. That's why I think the ego can be quite manipulative. Our, our minds are fascinating. But it keeps presenting in louder and louder and louder ways until be, it becomes so painful for you that either you give up and move on to the next thing, which is what a lot of people do. Or you dig in and say, okay, I surrender this. I surrender this fear. How can I look at this through love? And I know this sounds so funny because we look at love so often as this ego-based construct. The concept of 
love from lack. Love is a state of being. It's a way we perceive the world and we can perceive it with absolute clarity and absolute openness and an unconditional lens that is perfectly crystal clear. Or we can see love through ego and that's completely different. It's very tainted. And we can experience life through ego, which again is a tool teaching us something. And when I'm in the midst of a heavy ego moment, which this has been, feels like it's been going on forever. When I'm in the midst of a heavy ego moment, it doesn't feel, oh, it doesn't feel like it's a lesson. It feels like it's unfair. It feels like this is wrong. It feels like I've done all these things. Why isn't this opening up for me? Why is it not showing up for me? I know how this works. Oh, the magic words I know. I know. I know shuts down parts of your brain and says, move on to the next problem, please. I know this already. Trust me, two words you want to remove from your vocabulary are I know. Words like I am open to seeing what other options are here or other opportunities are here. I understand, but I'm still open. The choice of words we are using and thoughts we are using are helping or harming or working with our ego or not perpetuating the same problem until we learn. Seriously, I have been stuck in one part, one section of ego, not understanding. I asked for something really interesting and I manifest something in two days. And yeah, I'm using words like manifestation and oh, it sounds so woo woo. Guess what? We are all energy. And when you break us down to a micro level, that is all we are is energy. So anyways, back to manifestation. I'm creating this. I'm manifesting it, right? I'm drawing it to me. I'm bringing it into this existence through my quantum. I believe something. Therefore, I am seeing it out in the world. My mind seeks out my beliefs and proves it. So that concept around I have to see it to believe it is actually really backwards. I have to believe it to see it. So if I believe that, you know, let's say I'm, I'm looking for a partner and that all the good ones are gone or, you know, none of them want to commit or they're all like this then guess what? That's what I experience over and over and over again until I stop believing it. (laughs) Until I take a break from it. And I think that there might, just maybe, might be another option. Then I open up more possibilities. This is quantum. Quantum physics, quantum entanglement, how the two work together, but the laws within them. So a couple, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I'm doing a talk up in Edmonton. The talk is on goal setting and how to get all the things you never even dreamed you could possibly have. It's a great talk, super engaging. The audience is absolutely involved and it goes over really well. And I feel awesome. I've had this incredible connection with the audience. It's really a beautiful moment. I feel really good after, after the talk, I go back to the place that I'm staying at and my boys are there. And we have a really nice night together. And the next day I wake up and we pack up and we leave. And I don't know what happens. I I break down. Because there's been this underlying belief with me about success, worthiness, validation. All of it stemming from one place. So I, (laughs) oh, this is so brutal. I can't even believe I'm admitting this. So in the midst of all the knowledge that I know, I'm in learning. So anyways, I have this little moment in the vehicle. I'm coming up with all these great ideas. I'm like, I want to do empowerment camps for kids. I think that we could do some really amazing things and start to teach some key principles on mindset and how to get the brain to work with you instead of allowing it to run around like some untrained, unruly puppy pissing on everything, chewing up everything in sight because it hasn't been trained otherwise. And that's what our minds do if we don't train them and if we're unwilling to learn. And sometimes the lessons are painful because we don't want to learn them. And I can vouch for this in the biggest ways. 
So anyways, I have this moment in the car. I'm all excited. I'm like, oh, we're going to do empowerment camps, talking to the kids about, well, I have these great ideas, but I want to apply them to kids and make it more kid friendly and more fun. How can we do that? And we throw around some ideas. And then I literally like, I don't know what happened. Something shifted. And I, I literally broke down. I broke down in the car. I'm crying. Uh, well, it's probably also because I'm listening to some stuff that's drawing things out of me. And because moments in the car for me are very meditative. There's something about the driving experience that allows me to do some very deep thinking. And it was one of those moments when I just broke down. I break down and I'm like, that's it. That's it. I am completely done with this dating crap because for the last, I don't know, 10, 11 months, I have been dating in fun, awesome, but also not ways. There was a lot I gained from the experience I needed to gain because there was a lot I didn't know about what I wanted. It was a great space to explore in. So dating allowed me to really view the things I didn't want and therefore a lot of the things I did want. The things I found in different people and different experiences that I was like, that is really amazing and that really aligns with me. Because it's not about a person being right or wrong or a person being good or bad. It's just about alignment. If they align with you, you align with them. Hopefully you both align together, right? That's the whole point. (laughs) So I went, that's it. I'm done with this dating thing. I am completely done. I am ready to commit. Because it seemed that up until that moment, I had not been ready to commit. I didn't know that. And then I also said, I'm ready to commit to this life. To this life to the things I haven't been committing to in my life. And literally within two days, two things showed up. Things I asked for, I got really specific. And I just thought to myself, this is what, these are the characteristics I want in the person that will be my partner. When they show up, they show up and this will be it. This is what I want. This is what aligns with me. And kindness was one of them. Um, Non-judgment was another, that they were open to growth. I really, really want to share and create this life together. That's the point to be able to create greatness together, not be codependent. And so I laid out all these characteristics and traits that I wanted. I was also brave enough to lay down some things that I wanted to work through because that's what we get also from our partners is the ability to work through some of our own junk. And one of those things for me was perception around judgment and money. And this has been a very valuable lesson for me that's been drawn up over these past few weeks. I had no idea how much I judged myself, how much I looked at where I'm at, what I've done, or the experiences I've had in my life with so much judgment and horrible judgment. I've been placing it on myself. Isn't that fascinating that this is often what we do? We put this perception that we carry within ourselves and say, they're going to think this. Or they think this. Or they're going to judge me or they're going to think less of me or, 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 or. But this is what I asked for. I asked for this to be drawn up because I want cleared. See, our blocks often aren't really, it's not really about money. In this case, it was wrapped with money. What I needed to work through was judgment, self judgment. And we are doing this all the time. All the time we are doing this, we're looking at ourselves and we're placing our own boundaries based on our own judgments based on our own old, archaic, absolutely not functioning belief systems that we're carrying still. When we see through the lens of ego, it's telling us what to work on, what we need to clear, what we can do to reach wholeness, to reach our truth, to be who we're meant to be, to be the giants in our life. Instead of this small playing small. I don't want to play small. It doesn't serve me and it certainly doesn't serve you. And my job here is to serve you. My job here is to bring about my highest purpose, which is real love. I want to spread this out into the world. 
I want to spread unconditional, it falls out of you, you're so authentic with who you are, you can't help but give it and people love it and eat it up and they love you for it because it's your truth. That's what I'm here for. So how can I do that if I'm constantly telling myself all these things about why I shouldn't, can't, and don't? And I wrap it up all in a pretty little bow called money, or I wrap it up all in a pretty little bow called relationships, or I wrap it up all in a pretty little bow called whatever. Maybe I call it my career. I need to seek out another one. Maybe I call it the city. I need to seek out another one. Maybe I call it my coach. I need to seek out another one. Maybe I call it my therapist. I need to seek out another one. Whatever the case is, we're always seeking something because we're not seeking it in truth. We're seeking it through ego. And ego is showing us in the external world what we need to resolve. The external world is a reflection of who we are inside and what we're experiencing inside. And if I keep looking for the answers outside, I don't find them. I find band-aids and substitutes and things that are lacking and and sometimes maybe I might get really lucky and stumble across the thing that actually shows me what's going on inside but more times than not no I can move to another city I can change jobs because this one's unhappy I can change people and my marriages or my whatever relationships because hey the next one's going to be it I'm going to find what I seek. But what you're seeking is you. And what I was seeking was me. See, the judgment of self isn't kindness and love to self at all. It's actually kind of hating on you. And when we're judging ourselves and we're judging others, we're certainly not loving. In that judgment, we see a small little picture. We've talked about this before, about the small little picture that you get when you pass judgment. And see, when we do it to ourselves, we have all this information. So we think that our judgments are accurate. But they're lies. They're the lies we're telling ourselves to keep us small. They're the lies we tell ourselves that keep us small. And I don't know about you. But that morning at 5 a.m. when I woke up and I said my marriage is done, I promised myself I wasn't going to play small anymore and that I was here to do something big and it's here for you. I'm here to serve. And how do I serve if I'm playing small? And how do I serve if I'm being silent? And how do I serve the betterment of this planet and every person on it if I'm not brave enough if I'm not being enough, because I'm sitting in lack thinking I'm not enough. Or that I'm not worthy. Or that I'm not loved enough. All of this boils down to being enough and you are always enough. We get to experience life the way we want it. If we choose it and we're willing to course correct. And course correction sometimes is painful. Our state of being is choice of lens. And I say this with a full heart, knowing from the core of my being that this is not the easiest choice to make. When we get stuck in our stories, it's not easy. The choice is simple, but it's not easy. I remember writing when I was 26, and I, I'm i sure on some other podcast I talked about a moment of enlightenment I had. And I do believe that we experience enlightenment in and out for longer periods of time or shorter periods of time. And that is a state of being. That is the bliss state. That's the flow state. That's where we're most creative, most authentic, and in our truth. It's who we are. We can't help it. It just overflows from us. We just are. And in that state anything is possible. Oh my God, it's so crazy what shows up when we're sitting in that state. And I experienced that this morning when same old, same old, my kids have their 
iPad and, and their devices on and they're listening to YouTube videos and they're annoying as hell and, and, you know, the daily grind of the routine and none of it phased me. Not even at all. Actually, I sat there and smiled and went, it's really lovely to be in this moment with them happy instead of resenting the moment and resisting all that they're bringing to the table in that moment. They're little kids, right? They're just about 13 and 11. They're in the midst of their development and I'm lucky enough to bear witness to it all and help guide them through some of the most difficult parts of development. Aren't I blessed? Instead of hating YouTube and YouTubers that sit there and squawk and talk about video games and blah, and it's so loud. Instead of that, instead I get to enjoy these moments and be grateful for them because they're here with me. That shift made the world of difference this morning. The world of difference. And it's a shift of state and a shift of perspective. But it's funny how often we can't see what's going on with ourselves. I don't know what I don't know. So today, all this stuff is coming to a head and I'm confronting all of these beliefs that are absolutely not serving me, not serving anybody else. And they're devastating to me. And today I said, that's it. I surrender this fear. I don't want the fear anymore. How can I look at this through love? How can I look at this through love? Because again, it's a state of being. It's the lens I put on. And if you listen to the podcast, I am the puzzle or you are the puzzle or whatever it is. I think it's episode 28. But it talks about us being the puzzle. And at one point in there, I talked about perspective shift. So there's a section of this puzzle. I'm just going to reference this really quick, or you could go listen to it because it's a good episode. But this particular scene is I'm sitting there and I'm stuck in this one section. And I swear to God, I've looked at these pieces a thousand times, a thousand times. And I still don't see the pieces because I'm stuck in it because I'm looking at it through one lens one perspective, and it's emotionally charged because my external world keeps showing me all of the things I believe. I believe this, so therefore it is. And my world just keeps saying, hey, see, told you so, told you so, told you so. Our reality is our belief system. So when you hear or when someone says the reality is, no, that's their reality. There are certain things that are truth and fact And then much of that is perception. 10 people could view a situation and have 10 different stories of that same situation. The facts are still there, but the perception is very different from person to person. And that's what creates our reality is the belief systems we carry that we view things through. So when I leave the puzzle alone and I come back to it later, I'm no longer emotionally charged. I'm not attached to it the same way anymore. And I sit down and look at the puzzle from a different viewpoint. And all of a sudden, all the pieces show up and it becomes easy because I am not stuck in my trees. How can I shift this? How can I look at anything and expect to see solutions when I'm I'm only viewing it through one lens? Or when I'm only viewing it through the same belief systems. Or I'm like, how do we get creative in anything in our life? In any problem we experience in our life, if we are still viewing it through the same viewpoint? We can't. Because you're limited. You are stuck there. You have to shift that viewpoint. I can't be the President of the United States or the Prime Minister of Canada or whatever thinking the way I do right now. Because I don't think like that. I have to shift and grow into or shift into the next level and the next level and the next level to become what I want. I don't know what I don't know. And when I'm stuck in my own crap, I think I know it all. I'm not speaking for you. I'm speaking for me. I'm speaking for human. This is what we do. 
It's the way we function. Some of you will be better. <laughs> you won't have puppies doing everything to your house. Maybe you'll have puppies doing only some things to your house. Maybe you only get stuck some of the time. Maybe your self-doubt is is not as powerful. Maybe Maybe you experience it differently. Because as I'm saying this, I realize our minds work in very, very interesting ways. How we draw ourselves away from the things we want or the solutions we're trying to find or the life we desire. It may not be in self-doubt. It may not be in loathing or judgment or resentments. It may not be that way. It may be showing up in distracted thoughts, a thought that carries you off for an hour. And all of a sudden, an hour later, you're like, wait a minute, what just happened? Or half a day, or I need to check this on my social media, or I need some validation here just really quickly, or I just need this quick distraction. It's a very powerful tool within us to evolve us but more often than not, we don't know how to use the tool. And this is the one thing that I find myself drawn back to and reminded of on a regular enough basis, which is this. Regardless of where you're at with your success, with your evolution, with your spiritual connection, regardless of where you are at, there are moments when you will get caught up in your own junk, your lessons, and your awareness gets thrown out the window because you're in lesson. And sometimes those lessons are not so easy to see. And that's when it really helps having someone, well, it really helps in this way. It'll cost you less. (laughs) It'll cost you massively less in time, less pain, and ultimately less money. The money you spend to have a guide And I say guide, I mean coach, because the coach is the one that's leading you out of into the next level, not staying in what you're stuck in. But the money that you'll spend on that will be worth its weight in gold a thousandfold, a thousandfold, because I wouldn't have sat here all this time if I'd just been willing to be vulnerable with my coach. I have two coaches and I wasn't willing to be vulnerable with either of them because neither of them are my personal coaches. They're both business coaches. I didn't want to look that way. I didn't want to look like things weren't right. Funny how pretense and the way that we are perceived by the rest of the world really limits us. Hey, Had I only been willing to express this to one of the guides the people who have the right tools, the ones that know what they're doing to guide you along this journey of your own neuroses, because we all get in these moments to guide me along my path that I know if I'm the coach or the guide, but I wasn't doing myself for myself because I'm in the thick of it. I can't see beyond the trees that I'm in this big forest. I can't see it. I just see the trees. Someone said to me once, does a great athlete ever go out without a coach? Do they become an incredible athlete and move to the next level and the next level, become the Olympian, become the NHL hockey player? Of course not. They need their coaches because their coaches push them beyond themselves. Because all ego is, is the tool to teach you what's going on inside. If your life is reflecting, because that's all it is, it's a mirror image of you inside. If your life is reflecting things you don't like, it's things that you're not liking about you inside. That's it. And then everything shifts. And then you start to create all the things that you want. All the things you dream of. We need guidance. As much as I believed, because again, everything's based on belief systems. As much as I believed I could do this on my own, I don't really need this. This is why sometimes we really need that partner. And I'm not talking about your spouse. (laughs) Sometimes we need that accountability partner to put us back on track and rein us in when we're acting crazy. 
Because when we're not being our truth, we are being crazy. That is the crazy. That's the human condition. Us in experience lost in what is not true. Our truth is who we are. Our truth isn't buried underneath the lies being told by the ego or the lies that we see through ego. It's not even, it's not even really the lies that we are told through ego. Ego is just showing us what we are telling ourselves. Those lies are all the doubts, all the questions that I'm not pretty enough. I'm too fat. I'm, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm just a woman. I'm just a man. Who am I to do this? I'm just little blah, blah, blah. All of these are lies. All of these are lies. We are telling ourselves and therefore that's what our world reflects. Why do we lie? Let me ask you this. Where does it serve you, those you love, or anyone else out in the world? Anyone else out in this crazy ass world we live in? Where does it serve anyone? Believing the lies you tell yourself that are holding you in a place that is small. Does it help you? It certainly wasn't helping me. So I'm sharing this moment with you because I really feel in my heart of heart that this will touch you and create momentum to move. I offer the initial tool, honestly, because that's all it is. This is what I've come to understand. I offer you the initial tools you need to be able to break into this knowledge and then trust yourself. Trust your truth. Be your truth. It's going to come up. You will question your truth. Your truth will be questioned. But the beautiful part about that is you'll also be able to put yourself back on track. And when you can't, that's when you have a guide. Or just have a guide because it'll take you less time. <laughs> it's wise. It's wise. A lot of this has been trial and error through someone who's done a lot of deep, deep work. And I struggle in moments. And I've done a ton of deep, deep work. I have truly become the archaeologist of the soul. I have truly become the person that is willing to make the deep, deep digs to discover what is within and expand it. And I don't shy away from it. But God knows I resisted. Because the lies I was telling were pretty freaking big. So I ask you, what are you stopping yourself from right now? What are you stopping yourself from? What are you stuck in the forest with? Because as much as I'm a positive, so upbeat, super high energy, kind of excited person that brings a lot out I was stuck in my own crap. So what are you stuck in? Because <laughs> I guarantee there's something going on. <laughs> or we'd all be walking around like Jesus and Buddha. Enlightened and seeing the world for what it is. And creating anything we want. So if you're not having manifestations, like you wouldn't believe, and miracles show up in your life all the time. And I use these words because they're interesting words to me now. Words have a lot of power in our thought processes. But are you creating the miracles in your life that you want? Are you creating the life you want? If not, why? What lens are you looking through? And that fear lens shows up in so many ways. So get a guide. Should you choose to have my guidance? Because I am an excellent guide. I have been fortunate enough to help many, many people through many, many insights and now use many tools I now carry. I have the option to bring to you, but every single one of them I'm willing to share with you in any way I can to help evolve you. If this is right for you, come take my course. If you really feel like you're stuck, if you feel like your life is in overwhelm, if you feel like the world outside you is this crazy place that has you not feeling true to yourself, come take my course. It's called Elementals because it is. It's our foundation. From there, the rest of it, if you're willing, will open up to you. You'll trust yourself enough to know how to do it 
and to trust the tools that show up because they do. They'll show up intuitively for you. I won't have to guide you on that. And then when you derail, there'll be a group for that. (laughs) There's many groups for that, actually. It's beautiful. And I'll set it up. Um, Or you can have one-on-ones. It's your choice. But I'm putting it out there because this is me not playing small anymore. My small voice said, don't talk about this. My small voice said, don't put it out there. My small voice said, people can find it elsewhere. You won't find anything out there like what I offer. You won't. And I know that now. But I couldn't have said that even with the remotest of conviction before I owned my truth. I love you enough to say these things to you. I love me enough to stand in my truth unapologetically. Part of me right now is resisting this, going, I can't believe you're saying this, and did you really put it out there, and it feels like an infomercial, and but it's not. It's not. If you're ready, you'll know. If you're ready to make the step, you'll know that this is right for you. And you'll know that this isn't coming out of a sales tactic. This is coming out of truth. I'm here owning my truth. I know what I offer, and I know what I give, and how this transforms lives. And I'll guide you through to your next many levels and into your truth. So if I'm your guide, cool, contact me, um, go to fearitgoes.com or go to brandy at fearitgoes.com or info at fearitgoes.com and, and shoot me an email. I am ready to help guide you. The challenge, I am doing um, a five-day challenge on how to improve any relationship, how to improve any relationship in your life. Honestly, I think everyone should do this. Actually, I have, I will say this, I have made massive strides in the relationships I now carry because I view them differently. So I'm going to teach you guys this. Come sign up for the challenge. You'll find it on the Fear It Goes website and I posted it for December 9th. And then I'm going to run a second one right after it, how to improve your sex life. Because honestly, that is one of the most incredible incredible communication points. Women and men both, both should have very powerful sex lives in their partnerships because it's a way we communicate on a level that is not through the conscious that we would typically experience. We experience that in in so many different ways and we can absolutely work through different emotional experiences, traumas, um, emotional blocks in the bedroom because of the vulnerability we share with that other person. And it's miraculous what transpires in other areas of your life because your sex life is good. So if you want that, come join that challenge. Um, Women, men, doesn't really matter. I think you all need it. (laughs) We all do. (laughs) So that's me signing off. Love you so much. Love you so much. And thank you for hearing my total moments of neuroses and humanness that are painful to share, but I'm grateful to share them nonetheless. I hope this helps. Till next week, beautiful peeps. Have an absolutely extraordinary week.